Hello and welcome to News Click. I'm Paranjoy Guha Thakurta, and today's topic of discussion is India's largest private sector bank, that is the HDFC Bank. And with me here, joining me from Mumbai, is Hemindra Hazari. He's an independent analyst and commentator on India's banking sector. He's worked in the past with several banks like UBS, like HSBC, like Society General, and he has 25 years of experience in the banking sector, writes a lot on the subject, is a trenchant critic of the working of private banks in India. Thank you so much, Hemindra, for giving us your time. Uh, when we look at India's largest private sector bank, HDFC Bank, promoted by India's largest housing mortgage provider, HDFC Housing Development and Finance Corporation, HDFC Bank is India's biggest private sector bank. Now, the managing director and chief executive officer of HDFC Bank, Aditya Puri, is scheduled to retire in October. He's arguably the longest serving chief executive officer in any private bank. I mean, he's been holding that position from September 1994. And as he is about to demit office, we don't know yet who, he, who his successor will be. We've seen a large number of top executives leaving the bank. Quite a few of them under a cloud. That includes group heads. And the bank seems to be embroiled in various controversies. Among them is the forced mis-selling of GPS, that is Geographical Position Systems products, to those who borrowed money to purchase automobiles. And the former head of the auto division, Ashok Khanna, is one of the people who's left the organization, uh, together with Munish Muttal, Abhay Aima, Nitin Chog, Rajesh Kumar, Ratan Chand, all of whom had spent many years, between 18 years and 25 years in the bank. Raje, uh, Paresh Subthanka, the deputy managing director. And then in the, in the recent past, 18 uh, top executives have uh, left the bank. I mean, wh what explains the departure of so many top executives from the bank? See, the earlier departures could be explained in the sense that since HDFC Bank has been a highly successful private sector bank. Their senior executives would be naturally be poached by other banks or other non-bank financial companies uh, to get such expertise uh, for themselves. So that, that normally happens to any prominent successful player. However, the recent departures that we are seeing in HDFC Bank is the one that needs to be examined by the market, by journalists, by analysts more closely. Because these individuals who have left, and I named three specifically, one, Mr. Abay Aima, who joined the bank nearly at its inception in 1995 and had also worked with Aditya Puri in Citibank. He was heading their private banking division and he was considered a strong pillar, quote unquote, by the bank itself for that division. He left sometime in FY 2020. Mr. Ashok Khanna, who was heading their auto loans uh, division, which, mind you, constituted about 9% of their total bank's loans in FY 2020, and who had been with the bank for about 16 or 18 years. He also left the bank, it appears, as on March 31st, 2020. Then we have the case of Mr. Munish Mittal, who was the chief information officer, who abruptly left on 10th July 2020. Now, what is noteworthy is that two of these three reported directly to Puri, that is Abhay Aima and Ashok Khanna. There was no, they did not report to any other executive director of the board because these, these two were business heads. While in the case of Munish Mittal, because he was chief technology officer, he did not report directly to Puri, but I think he reported to some other executive director. Now, the issue is all three have served in the bank for a considerable period of time. They all had very important verticals in the bank. And when they leave, 
I expect a bank of such prominence, which has got a market cap of nearly $79 billion, which has such very significant foreign institutional ownership, and it's the largest bank in India by market capitalization. We expect that the management, you know, as a good corporate governance matter, that they will inform stakeholders when such individuals leave. Now, mind you, only as per SEBI requirements, only key management personnel, their changes have to be informed, and these people do not constitute that. But nevertheless, being in the important post that they, that they held, and because they've been such long serving in their particular post, one expected a bank of this stature to inform the public. Now, what happened is that nobody knew about all this. I started investigating this matter when I noticed in their annual report that Abhayama had left. And when I made inquiries, I subsequently learned that there's an anonymous whistleblower who had been tweeting for some time, even Mr. Ashok Khanna had left. And he had been tweeting this from 10th June of 2020 onwards. And he had been tagging many prominent banking reporters and editors. In but there's been no coverage of their de departure and even the controversial circumstances of their exits. So when I started looking at what he had been saying, these are very alarming things that this, the, the, this anonymous source who goes by the pseudonym of Madanlal Dharia on Twitter had been stating. And to me, when you notice such a prominent bank where there appears to have been serious cases of mis-selling of a GPS product in their auto loans division, and, the, and the, the head of the department leaves, there is no announcement by the bank. You have an anonymous Twitter just tweeting all this. The bank remains silent. The business media refuses to investigate. So thereafter, after verifying that these two individuals had left, I put out my own note on July 13, highlighting to the capital market and to my clients that there are these two senior people who have abruptly left the bank the bank is not officially responding to my queries, but it is evident when you look at the annual report for 2020 that these two particular individuals had left the bank. Okay, let me... Now, subsequently, and after... Me, no, let, yes. let, let me just interrupt you. As you have pointed out, HDFC Bank is not just the largest private sector bank in India, it is the darling of uh, stock market investors, uh, shareholders, especially foreign investors, foreign institutional investors, foreign portfolio investors. <clears throat> now, Mr. Aditya Puri, at the annual general meeting of the bank, acknowledged that action was being taken against particular employees. And we learn, and you will know better, that at least six of these top executives who've left in recent times were asked to leave. They didn't leave voluntarily, but they were asked to leave. I mean, in, in, in popular parlance, you can say they were sacked, be that as it may. And I think some of them had to do with the division that Mr. Ashok Khanna was in charge of. Now, again, the amounts may not amount to very much, but there was clear mis-selling or clear, uh, I don't know whether I, I, it may not be classified as a corrupt practice, but certainly many would argue that it was not an ethical practice that you say that you take a loan from HDFC bank to purchase a vehicle and you also have to purchase this geographical positioning system, a GPS device which is manufactured by a Mumbai-based company called TrackPoint, and each of those devices cost roughly about 18,000 rupees a piece. Now, how, I mean, how would you link this to the overall uh, corporate governance atmosphere that prevailed in the bank? See, that is precisely the point that I wish to highlight that if you notice that such practices have been going on in one particular division of a prominent entity, 
which the bank on its own does not disclose, but because of an anonymous Twitter of a uh, you know person who's been whistleblowing, and because of my cover and subsequently you know the business media picks it up, then only does the bank make some official statement. It therefore you know raises the very vital issue that are there these malpractices going on in the other divisions in the bank that we currently do not know of. And what is the bank doing about it? Because so far to the public, the bank has made it very clear that it is not going to reveal when such senior executives depart the bank, nor is it going to reveal the intricacies of any internal investigation that they may be having against any malpractices in the division. So everything then is left to the bank to disclose to the market. And I'm sad to say that the credibility of, of HDFC Bank has taken a steep fall in the manner and the way they have been transparent about not only the departures of senior executives, but the circumstances of the departure, because it raises a very valid uh, issue today that what are the malpractices, if at all, going on in other divisions that nobody knows about today. And this is all happening when a new leader is going to come on board in October. The market really does not know who that new leader is. There is speculation of three names that the media has been talking about. But today, nobody knows you know, that what is the, who is the new leader, what is he going to be. But we now know that you know, there definitely there have been malpractices. And the question it raises is that, one, how is it that the head of the division who's been heading that division for so long, all these six people are attributed to be very close to him. How is it that he was unaware all these years what was going on? Because mind you, Mr. Ashok Khanna had reached the retirement age of 60 in HDFC Bank three years back. And it was on the recommendation that he was given letters. So the question it raises is a person who you knew was going to retire three years back, one, you had no succession planning for that post because you still wanted him to continue in that post. And now we find that there are very serious malpractices were happening in that division which may have involved him for all you know. We don't know that for sure. But as of this moment, HDFC Bank is saying that he apparently is innocent, but his juniors are not. So okay. all these, at last, he was a direct reporting to Adhikri Puri. See, he was okay. directly reporting to the CEO. So the CEO also cannot escape uh, any you know, sense of responsibility over him. All right. So as of now, we know there were certain unethical practices going on in the auto loans division of the bank. We don't have any other evidence of any other kinds of unethical practices or questionable practices. Am I correct? Or, or do we have any other information uh, that points to the things not being exactly above board in the bank? Look, there have been instances even earlier, which RBI has it investigated as you realize in cobra post hdfc bank figured very prominently so there have been a lot of instances which market is aware of but of this particular instant the market was totally clueless until this whistleblower started tweeting and, and then so after I, you and then after you wrote about it uh, somewhat belatedly and almost reluctantly some of some of the mainstream sort of business media started picking up the story uh, I, I want to ask you, Hemendra, another question. Uh, uh, recently, we read that Mr. Puri, Aditya Puri, he had sold uh, most of his holding, nearly 95% of a stake he held in the bank, which was about 0.14%. And uh, he has earned about 842.7 crore rupees through the sale. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm sort of trying to understand what has this got to do with the ESOPs or the employee stock option program and also the timing of the sale given the fact that Mr. Puri is scheduled to retire in October. See, the timing also does raise an issue because he's leaving in October and the sale has been done I think in around 20th or 21st of July. 
and the market came to know on the weekend. Now, in the normal course, such a huge sale where you know most of his holdings have been liquidated would definitely raise uh, a, a major issue because normally one would expect that the departing CEO, if he sells most of his stake, he expects the profitability of the enterprise to decline and therefore the share price to decline. So he's encashing on the uh, profits today. But there is also a valid reason which the bank has really not officially stated, which could be that uh, he has to fund his new round of ESOPs, which he would get. And therefore, normally in companies, since senior staff who are given these ESOPs do not have sufficient liquidity uh, to fund the new ESOPs, what they normally do is before the funding of the new ESOPs comes in, they sell their old shares and the the funds which they get from that sale is then reinvested into the new ESOPs. So this could be a possible explanation uh, for the major sale of Mr. Aditya Puri's uh, shares, which, mind you, the bank, in my opinion, should officially clarify because there are not these lot of these doubts going on in the market. Why is the CEO selling such a large stake? So here again, and I find that HDFC Bank would do a lot uh, better in transparency. Okay. You know, uh, we had had a discussion more than a year ago also on News Click about uh, HDFC Bank. And, and you had at that point of time said this, that the bank needs to be far more transparent in its dealings with the, the public at large. And, and, and it should put out far more, far, far more information than it is at present. If you recall, uh, on that occasion, we had discussed the uh, report of the banking ombudsman scheme for the year that ended in June uh, 2019. And, and the Reserve Bank of India had released the report. And among uh, the highlights of that particular uh, report was that HDFC Bank, together with Kotak Mahindra Bank was very high in terms of the number of complaints per bank branch, the number of complaints per thousand bank accounts. And, and one, uh, of the one, one bit of uh, uh, the, the statistics that in the year 2018-19, which is more or less consistent with uh, previous years as well, HDFC Bank had shown roughly three complaints per branch. Whereas the banking sector as a whole, it, the number was less than half. It was 1.4 complaints per branch, which means that even as this bank claims that it is extremely customer friendly, it wasn't really that customer friendly. If one is to believe the report of the banking ombudsman. True. And you see, it is to be expected because if you see their ramp up in the their business, in their number of clients, uh, the volumes of business that they are handling. When you have a bank which is growing that fast, inevitably your systems really cannot cope with the type of volume of business. And that you see then in the complaints that are given and which are then reported to the Reserve Bank of India. Also, if you now today think Twitter and the social media is becoming a major source of information because when it comes to large and prominent companies, you find that the business media as a deliberate policy refuses to report on anything. So if one wants to know actually what is happening in these banks, especially some of the, you know, the negative aspects, it is most unfortunate that one has to go to social media really to come to know what is happening. And, 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 Hemindra, role, and if I may add here, if I may, the analyst community. Okay, okay. So if I may just add here, one of the obvious reasons why this is so is because HGFC Bank is a major advertiser. And, and the, the publications and other media outlets, uh, television channels, they are dependent on advertising. So that could be one of the reasons why there is less reportage about the negative aspects of banks like the HDFC Bank. And, and uh, the other point that you mentioned even a year ago, and I want to ask you whether things had changed. If you recall, uh, for almost a week in December 2019, we had uh, 
their bank breaking down, their, their, their digital systems broke down. And, and again, this is the same bank which talks about how, how uh, uh, friendly it is with those who bank on the internet. And, and we found that uh, there were a lot of problems because they didn't inform their users and they didn't compensate uh, users for their loss. Because what we found was that it, the mobile application had failed earlier in December 2018 and in, in other banks, whereas uh, we found uh, there were a lot of complaints about uh, ATMs, automatic teller machines and debit cards. In the case of HDFC, uh, it was more, their, more complaints were about the way their credit card systems work, their credit card operations, which is, was one of the highly remunerative divisions of the bank. It's a market leader, in fact, in that area. So the question that I have for you is, at that point of time, you said that A, it disregarded brazenly the losses incurred by customers because of the failure of their digital systems. And most importantly, you were critical of the fact that they didn't seem to have a digital recovery plan. Uh, are those st uh, comments still valid uh, a little more than a year down the line? See, till today, we do not know what exactly went wrong. You see, when you, a bank has such a major disaster, when so many of its customers are less stranded, and when it claims to be a digital bank and its digital operations do not work uh, for a critical period of time, one expects an official explanation from the bank of what exactly happened and what measures has the bank taken to prevent such an occurrence. Now, till today, the bank has been totally silent on it. The regulator of the Reserve Bank said they're investigating, and that's all that we heard then from the regulator. The regulator also has not put out any statement to the public. So today, one really does not know. The media, of course, refuses to do any independent investigation to find out what has happened. So there is this basic ignorance to banking customers, to stakeholders, when things go wrong. It's only when things are going right and the bank gets awarded with best bank award and best CEO award that there is mass publicity given. But when any of such critical aspects, which the public has to be kept informed, you find that there is this cloak of silence and nobody wants to lift that cloak. Well, thank you so much, Amindra, for talking to NewsClick. And time alone will tell whether Mr. Aditya Puri's successor, whoever that person is, whoever the Reserve Bank of India proves, well, he will surely have a, a number of legacy issues and legacy problems to deal with. And, and I'm sure uh, uh, many are not envying whoever this person is going to be. Uh, would you like to make a few closing comments before we wind up? As I said again, I think the role of HDFC Bank as the lead bank on the capital market. It should conduct itself in a more responsible manner. It should disclose more than what is officially required. And it should be more transparent. You see, especially at such critical junctures where there's so much speculation and rumor and where one comes to know from an unofficial anonymous source and the bank keeps being quiet about it. So it just adds to the uncertainty at a very critical juncture when the founding CEO is leaving after 25 years. So as it is, there is a considerable uncertainty in the bank. And then we get such episodes where the bank unfortunately does not satisfy the public or stakeholders queries on what exactly is happening and how is the bank going to resolve these things in the future as well. Okay. And regardless of what the market cap is, its stature in the market, you know, these things are extremely important. And if it fails to do so, it is the role of the media and of the analysts then to do their job, which sadly they have been failing to do. Well, thank you so much, Amindra Hazari, for speaking to NewsClick. And thank you for explaining in considerable detail what's been happening in HDFC Bank of late. And for all the viewers of this program, keep watching NewsClick.